Happy New Year, everybody. It is an absolute honor to be able to embrace 2022 with you. In fact, it fills my heart with so much pride and joy. I have a feeling that 2022 is going to be our best year ever. And I cannot wait to see what we can all achieve, particularly when we set our head, heart and mind to it. And we wake ourselves up to all the opportunity and abundance around us. So please make sure if you are ready to do this with me and embrace 2022, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. And of course, most importantly, that notification bell is switched on because I'm back and I'm publishing a fresh video for you every Thursday afternoon. Now, without further ado, I've got the perfect video ready for you to watch right now so that we start 2022 off on a strong, fresh financial note, which is all about starting from nothing so that no matter what has happened in your life, you have a fresh opportunity to turn a new leaf and rebuild, to rise from the ashes and show everyone how powerful, how capable, how strong and how resilient you really are and I'm going to hold your hand all the way through the year. So make sure you're subscribed, notification bell is switched on and let's start with an open heart and an open mind. I'm here with you all the way. Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. Today I want to talk to you about starting again from nothing, starting from ground zero, starting from scratch. Whether it be because you've just graduated from school or finished university, or whether you've come out of a relationship breakdown where you're walking away with nothing, or something even more serious such as a bankruptcy. I want you to know it's okay to start with nothing. We all start with nothing. We come to this world with nothing and we leave with nothing. It's where we all begin. But the thing is, right now, you are at a very powerful point where you can make a big difference. You can make a huge change, a huge shift, where you do things so much better. So this is what I want you to do. Number one, your mindset. I want you to stop and take some time to invest in your mindset. If we want to go and grow a huge, powerful, strong, solid oak tree, we need to make sure that we, number one, plant that seed into this really fertile soil. We need to make sure that a tree is protected from the elements. It gets the right amount of sunlight, the right amount of rain, and we protect it from any pests that might harm the growth of that tree. We want to make sure that that, that tree is incredibly strong, survives absolutely everything. This represents your mindset. So it's important right now that you sit down and spend some time exploring your mindset, making sure that you are ready to do this. You're ready to step up be accountable and take responsibility. You're going to address and face all of these new challenges and all of these new exciting things that lie ahead of you with a positive and open mindset. And do not begin anything until you know your mindset is supercharged and ready. Number two is accountability. Once you've adjusted your mindset, this is probably the hardest part of all, and that is to have a long, hard look at where you went wrong. What can you learn from your mistakes? What can you learn also from other people's mistakes? Make sure you learn and grow from everything that's around you all the time. This is where you can learn to do things better, smarter and wiser. You have a much deeper, profound sense of insight and wisdom. So use that to your financial advantage. Number three, this is the exciting part, and this is the part you're gonna love the most, and that is goal time, baby. All right, this is where I want you to think about what do you want to create for yourself? What is your vision? What are your dreams? What are your goals? And I want you to start writing them down on a piece of paper. Now, the way that I personally do this is I work backwards. I work at what my big picture is, my big dream, my big goal. I think about how do I really wanna spend my days? How do I wanna spend my weeks? What do I wanna add into my life? I really focus on the positive things that I want to add in, not the things that I don't want because we become what we think about. I think about what my dream life really is. I wanna have more travel, I wanna have more experiences, perhaps even a little bit of luxury if that's what you want. There's no wrong or right, it's your vision, your goals, your dreams. Now in this goal period, I also want you to think about how much money you need to earn to be able to create that life. Work out the cost of what that would be. So you would start with looking at what your cost of living is and add additional money for things like travel, for adventures, for going for additional restaurants, being able to afford to buy better quality food or better quality, you know, 
consumption goods, whether it be clothing or accessories. Now this is an annual income number. So you might sit down and go, okay, my normal cost of living is $50,000 a year, but I need an extra fifteen dollars to $20,000 a year for an additional holiday to create my dream life. Now, of course, we need to factor in inflation and we need to factor in tax. But after you've done that, depending on which country you're living in, you would work out that, okay, all right, so I need to earn about eighty dollars to $85,000 a year in passive income to create my dream life. That is, ladies and gentlemen, your mindful money number. All right, step number four is to do a budget. We need to get cracking on building that mindful money number. So the first thing I want you to do is write down all your living expenses. Go through every single one of them. And if you've never done a budget before, don't panic. Simply head to the Sugar Mama website and you can get a free budget template when you subscribe to our, our newsletter, The Sugar Hit, which goes out every Friday afternoon. Now, once you've written down all of your expenses, you can actually see what stays and what goes. Question each expense. Do I really need it? Do I need it that frequency or can I find a cheaper alternative? Also, when you're looking at your budgets, you can start to really see where your money goes. And when you're doing this, I want you to then follow up by doing a hustle list. I want you to write a list of all the things you can do to start hustling and earning some extra money in your life. Fifth step is really easy. And this is where it's gonna be your anchor or your point of comparison going forward. I want you to do a financial snapshot. I want you to write down absolutely everything that you owe and everything that you own. But I do not want you to be including like your shoe collection or your handbag collection or your, you know, I, you know, your gadgets such as computers. I need you to write down true authentic uh, wealth. So how much money do you have in your savings account? How much money do you have in your superannuation or your 401k plan or your pension account or your, or your Kiwi saver? How much money do you have in say shares? How much money do you have in say property or any other investments or bonds or whatever it might be? I want you to write down your true authentic financial assets. I also want you to write on the same piece of paper a list of everyone that you owe money to, all your liabilities. And I want you to write them from the smallest debt all the way to the largest debt. This is really important because this is gonna form part of our hit list and we really are fine tuning and making sure that our financial strategy is really efficient. Step number six, and this is priorities. This is where we go back to this liability list and we go back to our budget and we go back to our hustling list. Now, what I recommend you do is you clear your debts first. You need to clear the financial stress. You need to clear the decks. And the moment we've done this, we will actually add so much more efficiency in our life because we've got the monkey off our back and all the money going forward once you're debt free can go towards building your mindful money number. That is investing. So once you've looked at your budget, you've worked out some additional savings that you can create within your budget, you've worked out some additional hustles that you can bring into your life, I want you to make sure that you proactively and consciously make lump sum repayments to the first person on your liability list. That is the person that you owe the least amount of money to. Now, I will disclose that this may not necessarily be the most financially efficient way. However, it's efficient from getting debts out of your life because it's just a little bit like juggling balls in the air. The less balls that we have, the easier it is to juggle. So my job is to help you get as many of those balls out of the air, which represents as many people that you owe money to. So say, for example, I go through my budget and I find a cheaper energy provider and I find a cheaper mobile phone plan and I work out I can save an extra $100 per month. I want to make sure that I put that extra $100 towards the first person on my list. Also the same with my hustling. Say I do some market research and earn $50. That $50, as soon as I've earned it, goes straight towards the first person on my list. The moment that first person is completely paid off, I begin to give a big sexy tick, cross it off, and I move on to the next person on my list and I continuously work my way all the way down this list until I'm debt free. Now, once you are debt free, that is when I want you to build some emergency savings because I never want you to have to sell down your investment portfolio, or whatever it may be, and you know take a big step backwards in building your mindful money because you didn't have emergency money. I need to safeguard your finances. I need to make sure that that soil is incredibly fertile. So by having emergency money set aside in a separate dedicated savings account is going to help safeguard it. So for the next couple of months or even the next year, if it's, that's what it takes, I want you to start building emergency emergency money after you've paid off your debt. I'll tell you what, because you have mastered your budget, you've mastered your manifesting money techniques through hustling, you can actually save up this, this emergency money a lot quicker than you realize because all these techniques 
and hacks that you've learned is how you got out of debt in the first place. You just basically shift that money towards emergency savings. And you know what? It's going to feel good because instead of having all this money that you're working so hard to create and have to give away to people that you owe money to, it actually gets to st stay with you. You get to see it growing and building up in your emergency savings account and it feels good. And you use that motivation to think, you know what? I'm getting closer and closer as soon as I get to this emergency money number. I can then start investing. And so the final step is once you've paid off your debt, once you've built up your emergency savings, that is excitement time. We can start investing. We can start building our mindful money number. Now, what I recommend you do is number one, you do a risk profile and work out the best investment mix for you. I will link in the video description box below a fantastic website on the Vanguard website that actually helps you work out what your risk profile is. Please note this is educational, not product advice here. However, once you've got that, you can start building your investment portfolio. But my words of wisdom here are, as an experienced financial planner and an experienced investor, try and make sure that you are leaning towards two-dimensional assets. That is assets that grow in value over time, that is capital growth, but also assets that produce a long-term growing passive income stream. Now, traditionally, these types of assets are international shares, property and domestic shares. So in Australia, it would be Australian shares. This is incredibly important. If you go and invest in say a bond, it is purely income driven. It doesn't grow in value, it just pays a flat interest rate. If you invest in something like crypto, it's purely capital growth. You're not earning any income because remember, we want to build a long-term sustainable passive income stream, your mindful money number that gives you the lifestyle, the freedom that you desire. Having money sitting in a, you know, say crypto that's worth say a million dollars, it's not actually giving you that financial freedom because it's all stuck in that. And to access that money, you've got to sell it and trigger capital gains tax and brokerage and so forth. The same issue comes with something that's really conservative, such as a bond because it's not growing over the long run. Inflation can potentially eat into that money and it's not as valuable. You will not have the sustainability, particularly when you add in inflation and the increasing cost of living. So try and make sure that your assets are invested with a smart, wise, educated and informed investor cap on. That is including as much as you possibly can within your risk profile, two dimensional assets, property, international shares and domestic shares. Now, the final tip that comes in from starting again from nothing, and that is to constantly review and monitor. Remember that piece of paper where I told you to write down all of your assets and all of your liabilities and your mindful money number and your goals? Well, guess what? You hold on to that piece of paper and you look at it all the time and you track and you monitor that number. You see that your liabilities are coming down. You see that your assets, your financial assets are going up all the time. You see that you're making progress. You see that you're doing things differently. You see that, you know what, actually, this mindful money number is achievable. Yep, it's gonna take a time, but you know what, it's gonna be worth it. And the more I put in, the more I get out. The more I save, the more I hustle, the quicker I'm going to achieve this, the quicker I'm gonna do and see and experience the goals. My dreams are actually gonna come true. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Why am I telling you about this? Well, number one, because I believe in you. But number two, I'm someone just like you. I'm always working on my mindful money number. And these are the things that I personally do to get ahead financially. These are the things that I personally do to help achieve my goals and dreams. And I'm telling you this because I'm already on my path. I'm not at my dream my mindful money number yet, but I am certainly on my way. And every time I look at this, I'm in shock and awe as actually how much, how far I'm going. And there might be part times in my life where I'm achieving all my goals and growing my mindful number in a really quick, efficient way. But there might be times in my life where I slow down or even maybe have to take a step backwards. That's perfectly natural. That's perfectly fine. But the important thing is I'm making progress because I'm following the steps. I'm sticking to my budget. I'm always open to an idea of manifesting extra money and being open to the flow of money in my life so that I can use this money to put towards my financial goals and dreams. So don't waste any time. Take accountability, look at your mindset, learn from your errors, do your budget, look at your debts, look at how much money you've already got, and of course, start building your mindful money number. Do things differently, do things better. Keep it efficient, keep it simple, and hustle, baby, hustle.